When we think about where we are in today's world, it is one of the most exciting times with this intersection of technology and globalization coming together for dramatic change that will now allow us to not just keep up, but really create new paradigms, create new processes, new ways of doing things that have never been done before, and that there are no rules or really requirements. So in the same way that Amazon, the iPhone, the Android phones have entered our lives and changed the way in which we live, we can apply those concepts not only to higher education, but to business, nonprofit, to any industry really, because it's not about trying to keep up. That's so hard to do, being one step ahead of your neighbor or trying to see what he or she's doing and trying to keep up. It really is about leading. So the four factors that I've identified in creating your own path for success uh, have been triangulated, of course, through research, through my own experience, and from also the issue global and what I'm going to share with you. But the first item that I'd like you all to consider is the embrace of diversity beyond what has been done before. That in fact, in higher ed, we think about diversity demographically in business and even in higher ed now, in any industry, because of this dramatic change that we are now encountering due to technology, due to globalization, is that really the ability to think beyond your industry, beyond what has been done before, will allow your ability to actually move your organization, move your institution to the next level to not only survive, but really to thrive. The second item is to treat money as a sacred resource. Money allows for investment, investment that is needed for change, investment that is needed to make your organization more efficient through technology through outsources uh, services. It is not about just covering your overhead. The more that you are able to be organizationally efficient, which is my third point, will allow you to in fact save extra funds to find areas of, of funds, financial resources, so that in fact you can make the necessary investments in technology, in testing new pathways towards your success, to really identifying who your customer is and how you best serve them, or who your student is and how you best serve them. And then the final and fourth factor, so it's not very many, but the fourth one, is to take calculated risks. Run small scale experiments. And I know that that could be a new concept for you, but in a world in which the uh, paradigms, traditional ways of doing things have really changed because technology and globalization have had such a great impact, that in order to figure out who you're really serving and with what tools or what processes and methodologies really requires that you test what you think will work, or maybe what you've done through research and triangulated that information, and come back with, this is a process that we think will be really successful in engaging our students or our clients. And then it's about testing that in a very small scale way, so that it is not using up a bunch of resources and you're not throwing what money you were able to save um, through your organizational efficiency it is about then being very strategic in watching the outcomes. Are you, through your small scale experiment, actually getting to the outcome that you had hoped or that you had targeted? We really looked at the market, we looked at our mission, and we knew that at that time, only 25% or so of the students were non-traditional, but we were able to identify that was the niche that we would be serving and then make some very small strategic investments and experiments to understand what would engage them and what did they respond to and, and to actually start to set those goals of what should retention look like, what does success look like. And once we were able to figure that out, we were then able to scale.
it was really about what should we be doing to serve these unique non-traditional students in a way that actually embrace, engage them, embrace them, and help them to be successful towards their own personal goals, whether it's for the family or for their professional environment. That allowed us to then set our roles, set our goals, and come out in front and lead in a way where now the market has actually flipped and there are now 75% of all students non-traditional. And so when we go back and think about the Amazon, iPhones, Android phones, Southwest Airlines, all companies and products and services that in their time, they define, those companies define what their market would look like and what they would do to serve that market in a way that had never been done which allowed them to lead, even if they were very small at the time, to lead and to continue to grow. And so CSU Global being an example of that in higher education, we hope will help empower and excite you to think about your own organization, your own institution, and how you in fact can identify your niche of who you are trying to serve. Have you considered very carefully what services and ways in which you're continuing to engage and provide them benefit because that's they're coming to you for a reason and your ability to serve them and to meet their unique needs is really where we're going as a world. It's so interesting as we use technology for scale and for mass service provision. Really what we're seeing is this individual need to be recognized as an individual to have the social, even if online, interactions where people are treated as individuals and that they are able to connect to others and, and have this human touch approach, even if it's through technology mediated interaction. And so there's so much opportunity for you and your organization or your institution to identify who it is you wanna serve with what tools, what processes, what is it that they need, and why are they coming to you? And if you can provide that service and experience that they're seeking, you are able to create your own paradigm so that you lead and not just try to follow.